Hi guys, it's Sam for Digital Me, and um, in this tutorial, I'm going to be looking at uh, the hinge dynamic connector. Now, I'm actually going to be doing a series on um, the dynamic connectors. This one just happens to be the hinge. So, I suppose we'd just better get on with it, I suppose. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a cube. I'm going to turn my ground shading on with lines. I'm just going to make this thinner. Um, this is just to demonstrate what the uh, hinge does. I mean, I'm, I'm sure if you've seen a hinge before, you're going to be very aware of what it does. But So I've made this shape and I've just moved it across. I'm going to copy this as well um, and boot it over the other side. And then what I'm going to do is go up to the simulate tag uh, dynamics and choose the connector. Um, now let's name this A, in fact, let's name this one B because it's on the other side and let's name this one A and we'll put them in order. Now let's click on the connector. Now the type um, on the object tab, uh, the type is already set to hinge. We've got all these different kind of um, connectors here um, and I will be going into each one of these in separate tutorials, but for this one, let's just stick with the hinge. Okay, so object A, it's asking what object A is. So we can put that in there. And then we've got object B. And you've got a reference axis and you've also got the where it's attached, you know. Um, for the purposes of this, not a lot of that matters, to be honest. Um, so without further ado, you can see here that we've got our hinge object. Now, if we go to display, um, you can choose the draw size, so if you need it to be bigger so you can see what's going on, you can make it bigger. Uh, 50 is fine for this. Um, but you can see the hinge is actually arranged in the wrong direction. Uh, the rotation is around this, so to make a hinge, we actually want to, you know, to, to make these, you know, flap around each other or whatever. We actually want to rotate this 90 degrees in, in this. Okay, so that's now the, the correct orientation. Um, I'm just going to grab all of this and move it up so it's above the floor and I'm actually going to create a floor. Now we need some dynamics. So the floor, uh, let's make this a, I'm going to right click on that, go down to simulation and I'm going to make this collider body. A and B, I'm going to make them rigid bodies. So I've just selected them both, simulation tag, rigid body. Um, and that should do us. Let's add some time on our clock. 15 seconds should do it. And they just fall down. And not a lot happens. And in fact, I'm going to get the, uh, I'm going to get rid of the rigid body off of A so it holds it up. So let's press play now. There we go. So it's holding both these objects up. And just to show that the hinge is working, I'm going to create a sphere. Move it up in the Y. Oh, didn't want to size that. Just move it over there. And then I want to size this down slightly. I'm going to move it back. And I'm going to throw it at this uh, sort of door hinged object. Uh, okay, so um, what do I need to do? I need to put a rigid body tag on it. So simulation tags, rigid body. And to fire it at this, uh, if we go to the dynamics tag, and then you can see that there's this here, custom initial velocity. So if I tick this on, we can actually make it move uh, towards this and smack into it. So you can see that this is the Z direction, and that would correspond to one of these coordinates, and it goes X, Y, Z. So it's this. I'm just going to add 400 centimeters there. And let's press play. There you go. Brilliant. So the hinge is working. This isn't dynamic. Um, you know, this hasn't got a rigid body tag on it. This one has, and the hinge is holding them together. And it's working as it should. But you can see that the um, that one ob object is actually going through the other. And there's a couple of ways we can get around this. Um, I could put a... Um, not a rigid body tag because we don't want it to be affected by gravity. But if we right click on A and go to simulation tags and say collider body and then hit play, it's still probably going to go through. 
Yes, it does. And that's because there's a setting on the um, on the connector down here that says ignore collisions. That may be helpful if you've got like a complex hierarchy of connections and this doesn't matter, or you're using the angular limit, which I'll come to in a minute. You may you might want that on, but for this one, I'm going to turn it off. That hits that, and then it interacts with the, the other wall, if you like there. So that's one way of doing it. All right, so we can turn ignore collisions on and then turn on this angular limit. Okay, so you'll see now um, that we've got this kind of semicircle, uh, this solid semicircle on the connector, and that kind of shows us where our angle limit is. So if we just press play, you can see that this, this rotates round and boom, stops there. I'm actually going to hide the the boxes for the moment so we can see what's actually going on. Um, you can see this blue piece is the thing that moves around. So there we go, it's moving around and it will stop when it gets to this half of the semicircle. So that's how we control the angular limit. So we've got from here. Uh, I should imagine that will make it go haywire. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we probably want to leave from where it is and uh, actually move to maybe. Okay. So if we do it now, you can see that it will get round to this, this part of it. Okay, so if we turn our objects back on, we can use that to control how far that goes round. So we'll let it play again. And now I can affect this so it'll only go round to, say, that point. You can see it's still intersecting. So maybe there. And it's still... So maybe it's about there. Yeah, there you go. So we have actually haven't got any um, collisions going on because it's ignoring them. It's just that the connector's got a limit on it now. So it'll get around to there. And you'll notice that it kind of stops dead, but we've got this bounce. Um, uh, we've got this bounce value that we can actually put up. So you'll notice that it kind of hits, boom, dead. So let's put this up to 50% and see what happens. Rewind it. Okay, maybe not, not that big a difference then. Okay, there you go, a little bit more. Put 100% bounce on there now. And it bounces back. So yeah. Okay, so that's by and large how the hinge works. Um, you've got a cache as well, so... I don't know why... You, oh, okay, so yeah, when you cache dynamics, it will include this in the cache, probably. Um, okay, so that's good. Um, so yeah, I think that's that about sort of covers the hinge really. But um, I wanted to maybe do something with just the hinge to uh, to um, show off what it can do really. So I thought it would be a nice idea to um, to try something. And the first thing that came to my mind was this. It's called the double pendulum. Um, so I'm just going to play this video quick. Okay, so this is a regular pendul pendulum. Um, and this is actually a really good example of how, um, you know, within sort of Newtonian motion, a pendulum is something that can be quite predictable. You put some energy into it, you let it go, and um, uh, you can predict things quite easily about, you know, where it's going based on its speed and all the rest of it. But um, if you add a second pendulum to it, it actually adds a lot of complexity to its motion. Um, it really kind of affects the way it moves and whatnot. And I thought it'd be something cool to make in Cinema 4D um, and actually sort of see if the dynamics in Cinema 4D can actually um, handle that kind of calculation and, and whatnot. So let's start. So I'm going to make a cube. I'm going to, let's see, let's make it five centimeters wide let's make it a meter high and a couple of centimeters thick uh, in fact i'm going to make it 10 centimeters wide just so we've got a bit more room to play with 
And just so we can um, measure things out a little bit easier, I'm going to add uh, segments in the Y. I'm going to add 10 of them. So because it's a meter long, each one of these is 10 centimeters. Lovely. Okay, so I'm going to go into the front view now and make this editable by hitting C or clicking this button up there. Make editable. Um, and I'm actually going to... Let's see. I'm going to move the axis of the object up to the top so its pivot point is up here somewhere okay so let's do that uh, so i'm going to select this the enable access tool so now i can move the axis without moving the object and i'm going to move that up by well this is 100 meters if i moved it up 50 it'd be right on the edge there so i want it to be somewhere in here so 45 i think would probably do it there we go smack bang in the middle perfect and then i'm going to come out of the axis tool and then move the whole thing to zero. So now it's world zero. Lovely. Um, come out of that view. So now we've got one of our pendulums here. So I'm just going to rename this pendulum one. And I'm actually going to go into its coordinates and rotate it, not that way. Yeah, this way, uh, 180 degrees. So it's facing up. Um, and then what I'm going to do is actually copy this. Uh, so let's go into our front view again. Now this is on zero. If I, so let's make a copy of this pendulum and call it two. So where the pivot point is there, I kind of want the same thing here. So that would, so let's move it up. Uh, 90 degrees there we go so that's that's in the middle now um, lovely and then what I'm going to do for this one is actually move it forward slightly so these two objects don't touch each other I mean you can get fancy about how you make something look but even though you can't see they're connected the the, the connector will still hold them together so that's fine and what I'm going to do with this one I'm actually going to uh, rotate that to 270 degrees so it's at a right angle okay so that's fine um, okay now we need to connect the first pendulum to something so I'm just gonna build a wall so let's make a cube let's thin it out a little bit let's go into the top view uh, that's the front view this is the top view and I'm just gonna drag it back so it's about there we've got some clearance let's go back into this view um, I'm gonna make that editable go to my scale tool and scale it in the uh, X and Y and just make it nice and big um, and because I made sure this first pendulum was at zero when I created the box its center is at zero and that's where its pivot is um, so that'll be helpful for us in a minute. Um, okay, let's get some color in here quickly. So I'm just going to create a material. I'm going to call this wall. Um, let's make this some kind of light blue or something just so we can see our objects on it nicely. Okay, that'll do. Oh, have I got the reflector? No, I haven't. Okay, let's copy this. And let's call this one Pendulum, Pendulum, um, and we'll make this a nice orange or something, nothing too mental, yeah that'll do, okay so we can whack that on Pendulum 1 and 2, okay right let's connect, connect these bad boys up then, right first of all we're going to need a connector, so simulate um, connector in fact we're going to need a couple of these so I'll just create a couple uh, and I'm going to put the first one between the cube and the pendulum and in fact I'm going to rename the cube wall so I know what I'm talking about and then I'm going to put the second connector between the pendulum and the second pendulum okay so the first connector right well it's orientated the, the, the correct way um, so it wants to know what object A is, that's our wall. 
and it wants to know what the second object is, and that's our pendulum, one. Okay, um, so we've got ignore collisions on, that's fine, because they shouldn't be colliding anyway, but we can always make sure. Now, <clears throat> the first pendulum is going to need a simulation tag on it, so a rigid body tag. So let's just press play and see what happens. Not a lot. Okay, so why is this? A okay, pendulum and it's connected to the wall and pendulum one. Blah, blah, blah. Ignore collisions. Yeah, right. Everything's great there. It's probably because it's just uh, stood straight up. So let's connect the other one up. Um, we've got connector, the second connector here. In fact, I'm going to rename this connector two and call this connector one just for clarity. So connector two, we actually want to move up to the pivot point of our objects up here. So let's go into this view again. And if you remember rightly, I think I moved it up by 90. There we go. So there we have it. It's at the correct place now. And for connector two, we want to choose pendulum one for object A and pendulum two for object two. So let's, okay. So we're going to need to put a rigid body tag on this one as well. Okay, so we've got rigid body tags on both of them. You'll notice that the connector um, is asking where its center of mass is for object A, and it's asking where it is for object B. Now, where it is is fine, but if you wanted to, you could you could move that center of mass. In fact, you've got the option of saying, no, it's a polygon point. So it'll actually um, clip to one of these points and then where it says index, you can actually flip through the points. And as you go up, it's actually it's point index. But in our case, uh, the center of mass is fine. Also, you've got a point selection. So if you made a selection, made a selection tab, uh, tag even, you could drag that into here and it would put the center of mass of the object there. But in our case, the center of mass is, um, you know, where the I think it's where the pivot point is, I'm not sure. No, no, it's not, it's the center of the object in general. Okay, so now we've got that on both of them, we might get a result now, so let's give it a whirl. Yeah, there we go. So I'm just gonna unselect all of this stuff. And it's actually handling it quite well. I'm just gonna take off this grid, filter, grid, and we can see what's going on a little bit better. We're actually getting some nice motion out of that. Some nice Newtonian motion. So the hinge is doing exactly what it's meant to be doing, and um, it seems to be re reacting quite cool. Okay, so what can we do from here then? Well, I thought it'd be interesting to maybe trace the path of this. So I'm just going to create a sphere. Um, it doesn't need a lot of segments, to be honest. In fact, it hardly needs any. That'll be fine, just three. I'm gonna make it a child of the pendulum two. So as this moves, the it will take this with it. In fact, there you go, you can see what it's doing there now. Okay, uh, we need to make it a lot smaller. So let's make this, I don't know, let's make it one centimeter big. Um, I'm gonna go into my front view again. So we wanna move it up by, I think it was 90. Oh. Obviously not. Um, <laughs> so what's this then? Okay, so that's zero. Oh yeah, of course it is. That's zero. So why is that on the X direct? Oh, I'm an idiot. Now I'm just gonna take this from here. It's because it's a child of this object, so it's seeing world space relative to its parent. So I'm just gonna take it out of there, select the child, Move it up 90, and then I want to move it across this way. So that'll be positive X, yeah, and I want to move that 90. So it's smack bang in the middle of the end there. And the reason that I've done that is because I want to trace this. Um, so I need an object with points for it to trace, if you like. Um, so a sphere is a good, a good object as any. Um, I'm also going to move it forward so it's actually sticking out the front slightly so our trace doesn't sort of interfere with the with the object is with the uh, second pendulum um, so now I'm going to make that a child of the pendulum and hopefully 
it should follow it. I've got the sphere selected that you can see the um, axes for it. Okay, and that seems to be working fine. Also, something else, just to make sure the dynamics are being um, figured out in a more correct manner. I'm going to go to my project settings and actually go to the dynamics tab. And uh, <clears throat> you've got this expert tab here. Now, steps per frame and maximum solver iterations per step. This is how many count. This is to do with the, the, the amount of calculations that the dynamics um, sort of module of Cinema 4D, 4D is actually doing. Now, I've got a pretty good CPU on my computer, so I can ramp this up. Um, so I'm five at the moment, so I'm going to double that to 10, and I'll double this as well to 20. Um, so you'll get a more accurate uh, simulation. In fact, um, you know, if you find ever that you're doing some dynamic simulation and you've got like the edges of boxes going through the floor and stuff like that, it's because there's not enough steps between frames for it to figure out where its actual position is. So um, by ramping these settings up, you can actually fix that kind of thing a lot of the time. Um, okay, so it seems to be going mental. Cool. Okay, so now I've got my sphere on there. Um, I'm actually going to create a tracer object by going to the MoGraph menu, going down to Tracer. There we go. And then it's going to ask, well, it's actually already dumped my sphere in there. I think it's because it was selected when I created this tracer, but it's dumped it in there. And if I play it now, you'll notice that it's actually making this trail. But if we zoom in, you can see that it's making a trail for every vertex that this object has. Don't quite want that. So, um... I'm going to, there should be a checkbox somewhere, oh, here we go, trace vertices, take that off, rewind, and it should have one trace now. Okay, so it's making this trace, which is kind of cool, but you can, you can kind of see it's a little bit janky, like we've got a straight line here, straight line there, straight line there, and it's because there's not enough subdivision in in the actual spline uh, so that's what this is it's an internally generated spline in the trace tracer object so what i'm going to do to combat that first of all i'm going to change this linear to b spline so it should smooth it out a little bit but um then we get to choose intermediate points i'm going to choose natural so you can see that it's smoothed it out a little bit um I wonder if B spline cubic maybe. Let's have a look at the, the motion for this. Okay. Okay, that's not bad. Cubic's okay. B spline. Okay, well that looks kind of good. I'm gonna leave it at that for now. Um the number of segments, I'm gonna leave it as it is for now. And um, we'll sort that out in a minute when I've put my sweep on this. So basically this tracer is creating this spline. Lovely. Okay. But now what I'm going to do is go into this menu here. Not that one. This one. Get a sweep nerbs. So we've got a sweep object now. And I'm going to use this tracer spline as something to sweep a shape across. So I need a shape to sweep along it now. So if we go to our splines, I'm just going to um, select a circle. And I'm going to reduce its radius so it's maybe one centimetre. And I'm going to put the circle in the sweep, and I'm also going to put the tracer in the sweep. So they're both children of the sweep. Now you can see that <laughs> it's made this mental object. And that's because the, the order of these are the wrong way around. So I've got the tracer first and the circle second. Really what you want is your path second and the shape you're sweeping along that path first. So I'm just going to change the order. And now you can see we've got this sweep moving across it. Okay. But there's a lot of geometry going on here. So let's have a look at our circle first of all. Uh, intermediate points is adaptive. It doesn't need to be adaptive. We're going to change this to uh, wait, none. It gives it four sides. Um, and in fact, I probably think we can get away with that. Um, with the sweep, on the sweep nodes, we've got a fong tag. And if I take off edge breaks and put this angle limit up to something redonkulous, in fact, take the angle limit off, 
when you take the um, the the lines off, it actually does appear to be round, even though it's only got four sides, and that's because of this sort of kind of fake smoothing. It's a trick, basically, <laughs> but that'll do it, I think, um, for the actual segments rotating around the circle. We've only got four now, but now we've got to worry about our segments that are actually being swept along this. There's a lot going on there. So if we actually go back to our tracer object, we can, this is uh, what this number controls. So if we drop this down, you can see that it actually reduces the segment. So I'm going to leave it at two, maybe. Okay. And we should probably make a material for our sweep as well. Um, so let's make it something vibrant against our our background. Maybe something red. I'm a big fan of red. Uh, okay. Yeah, that'll do. And we'll put that on our sweep. Okay, so you can see that's red. I'm going to take the lines off so we can see everything a little bit better. Yeah, that's quite vibrant. Rewind the timeline. And I'm going to add a little bit more time to this as well, just to see what happens. Brilliant. That's cool. I could watch this for ages. Fucking maths, everyone. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's really good. It's actually made me think, what would happen if I took the gravity out of the scene? So if we actually go back to our project settings, go to dynamics and then go to the general tab, we've got gravity and this is uh, 1000 centimeters, it represents its acceleration. So if I put that to zero, nothing's going to happen because there's no gravity. But if I go to this first pendulum connector here, so pendulum one, if I go to its uh, rigid body tag and go to the dynamics tab at the beginning, we can su set the uh, custom initial velocity, but not just for direction, but rotation as well. So the rotation that we want, let's have a look at the pendulum itself coordinates. So it'll be this banking. So it'll be the last value. So if we go back to our rigid body tag for that, it will be this value here. So let's put 360 in and set it off. Okay, that didn't seem to do a lot. Okay, connection, pendulum, the pendulums. Okay, let's times this value by two then. Times by two. And rewind it. There we go. I didn't rewind it back to the beginning. You have to reset the dynamics. Okay, so there's actually no gravity pulling it down now. So it's like it's... Uh, it's um, zero gravity, pretty much. It's like it's in space. Okay, the animation's going to end before anything happens. So I'm going to actually times this initial velocity by two again. In fact, I'm going to times that value by two. So, so we get we just get there quicker, I think. So let's give that a go and see what happens. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, we're actually, because there's no gravity, we're getting a more regular pattern now. It's kind of like a spirograph. I don't know if any of you guys had that when you were kids, but um kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Uh, I've got to be honest, I'm just playing now, but um I thought, you know, if you guys want to see this, it'll be good. Uh... Okay, let's let's crank this up again. Times this value by two. Set it off again. Okay, it's a lot quicker now. Yeah, sweet. It actually makes me wonder what would happen if I put a third uh, pendulum on the end. You know, because two's never enough. So I'm going to copy this. No. Actually, yeah, I'm going to copy that. Get rid of this sphere. Um, okay. 
and I'm going to call this Pendulum 3. Um, going to my front view, so I want this pendulum to actually move to the middle of this, which again I think is 90 in the X. Okay. Um, and let's rotate it. So it's 180 that way. Okay, I'm going to need a connector now, so I'm going to steal this connector and just copy it and dump it between these two. I'm going to call this connector 3. I uh, also need to override what's in here as well, so Pendulum 2 is the first one, Pendulum 3 is the second one. And Oh, and actually the location of this isn't the right place either. The actual um, connector itself needs to be shifted over here, which is 90 in the positive X. So, okay, that should be set up now. So, let's give it a go. Yeah, it works. Now, the trace has failed because uh, it's looking for a, a sphere that I deleted a minute ago. So, if we go to the tracer and I just drag this sphere into this trace link field, everything should be back to normal. Excellent. Okay, that's way more chaotic. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Yeah, it's cool. It's way more random than the other one. It also makes me think what would happen if I actually went into this view, selected my pendulum and scaled it on the So it's shorter. Okay, maybe not that much actually. Maybe if I just scaled it by 20%. Okay, something like that. If that would have an impact. Okay, it's definitely <laughs> going loopy. Excellent. Okay, I think I'm going to try the same thing just with the gravity on, and then uh, I think that kind of wraps it up for us. Mm -hmm. Dynamics general, so this was, I think it was a thousand. Yep. So let's try it with the gravity on. Oh, wow. Very cool. Now you can see actually that um, you're beginning to see the subdivision in the Thing. So if you go back to the uh, the sweep, uh, the tracer even, and go down to this um, natural number, just whack it up another one, maybe two. I should thin it out a little bit. Let's get back to the beginning. There we go. Yeah, that's great. So you can see, guys, I mean, just from a simple uh, dynamic collect, uh, connector, such as the hinge, you can actually get some complex stuff going on. Um, so I just wanted to do that to show you an example of some of the results that you can get out of this. So I hope that's been of some use. So that's the hinge dynamic connector in Cinema 4D. Um, in the next one, I think we'll just go through them as we need to. So that'll be the Carden uh, connector. So that'll be the next tutorial. Uh, as always, guys, check out the Digital Meet website, digitalmeet.uk. And um, from there, you can find me on uh, Facebook and Twitter. All right, cheers, guys. Bye.